This morning I'm bringing you a quick video on what trolling motor to get for your Colorado XT pontoon or whatever pontoon that you're using that can accept a trolling motor and what trolling motor not to buy for your Colorado XT because you will be disappointed as I am with this particular model I got. And just so you know, before we get into it, I have lots of videos on my channel about the Colorado XT and some of the modifications I've done to it. So I'd encourage you that after you're done watching this video, you go on my channel and take a look at my other Colorado XT modifications. I'd also really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up and like this video along with subscribing to my channel. There are a couple things we're gonna cover in this video. Uh, like I said, one about the selection of the trolling motor you're doing, but I'm also gonna cover how I mounted the trolling motor. I realized I had never done that for any of the other videos that I had done. So let's first talk about the mounting of the trolling motor, and then we're gonna get into what kind of trolling motor you don't want and what kind of trolling motor you do want for your pontoon boat. So I'd love for you to take a look at the mounting that I have on this pontoon. You're going to see right away that I did not use the stock mounting for this unit. And the stock mounting for these pontoons is over to the right side or to the left side of your boat. I found that that was just not a super great idea because it needed, in my opinion, to be in the middle of the pontoon. And so what I did is take a piece of plywood that was wide enough to be able to be covered by the inside bolt holes. Well, I mean, this is pretty simple, right? I just stuck some bolts in there and put this piece of plywood on. You're also gonna see that I have another piece of wood on here. It is not attached to the plywood backing, to the plywood mount for this trolling motor. It is just loosely in there. It's just held on by the clamps of the trolling motor. And that's just to provide enough space for the trolling motor to actually clamp onto. The problem with this Endura 30 motor and the reason you should not buy it for your pontoon is the shaft is the shortest shaft you can buy. Shorter shaft of this cheap trolling motor makes it to where when I'm at full throttle with this thing and I'm weighted down with all my gear and the battery and my butt, it still sucks water in the, and cavitates and it steals energy. And so if I could do it over again, I would definitely just buy a 30 pound thrust trolling motor, but with the longer shaft on it. You also might be wondering as you're uh, looking at my setup right here, why I have this arm right here. Well, this is one of the hacks that you're gonna see uh, in some of my other videos as far as having steering that is linked to the seat so I can just shimmy my butt around and point the pontoon in a different direction without having to, to reach back with my hand and hold on to the, the tiller handle of the trolling motor. So let's get into what type of trolling motor you should be getting for your Colorado XT pontoon or any other pontoon that you can mount a trolling motor on. When it comes to the amount of thrust, and this is a question that I had, and it's probably a question that you have, when it comes to the amount of thrust of a trolling motor, what's the right size? Should I get a 30 pound thrust Minn Kota Endura like I have here, but with the longer shaft? Or should I get like some 55 pound thrust monstrosity because then it's gonna get me on a plane? Well, the first thing to understand about thrust and speed, there is no relationship between the pounds of thrust and the speed that you're able to maintain. If you've done any internet research whatsoever, you're gonna hear a lot of sources say that five miles an hour is the fastest you're gonna get any trolling motor to go in the first place. If in fact the thrust has nothing to do with speed, then save the money and buy the cheaper trolling motor and just the 30 pound thrust. Now you are not moving a 20 foot bass boat here. You're moving yourself in a pontoon boat, an inflatable one, uh, on top of that. And so it's not sitting in top, in the water, it's sitting on top of the water. So you just don't need a whole lot of thrust with these trolling motors. On top of that, the lower pound thrust that you get, the longer your battery is going to last because it just doesn't draw the amperage that a bi bigger trolling motor is going to draw. So I'm gonna put some links down in the description on some of my recommendations for the trolling motor for your Colorado XT. It's not going to be the one that I have on here and I'm too cheap to buy another one, so I'm just going to, to deal with it. But I would encourage you to take a look at those links that I have below that are just gonna tell you what trolling motor you should buy. I'll also throw in some links to the type of battery that I use for my trolling motor and the battery case, the power unit that I use to house my battery in. I highly recommend it. In fact, I would, I would consider it a necessity to get the, the particular battery case that I have. So all those links will be in the description. That's it. I hope this video is pretty helpful for you when it comes to picking out a trolling motor for your Colorado XT.